to go to one of these recitations that's couched in Ulster Scottish, it's long now. You tip, you tip long enough. Uh, there's 35 verses in this poem. That's all right. And it tells the story of how an old man met a younger man along the road one evening just before it got dark. And he stopped the young fella to tell him a bit of the local history. And uh, whether it's out of the goodness of his heart now or whether he just wanted to frighten the young fella, you can judge for yourselves. But this meeting took place along a stretch of road that was made famous by the pen of a very, very famous lady. And that lady was none other than Mrs. Alexander, the famous handwriter. And uh, <coughs> from then on, that particular stretch of road was known as Stumpy's Bray. And it's still referred to as Stumpy's Bray to this day and age. It's still referred to as Stumpy's Bray. But now, the people who live in and around Stumpy's Bray will all tell you that this is no fable. That it really happened. And now whether I did or not, I can't say. But I have a sneaking suspicion that it did happen. Where is the Stumpy's Bray? It's in the county Donegal between the town of Lufford and the village of St. Johnson, along a kind of a by road. I have been there and I've interviewed, talked to some of the local residents, and they've all maintained that this really happened. Now, whether it did or not, I can only tell you the story. And the story is entitled Stumpy's Bray. And that's just how it goes. Here do you know tell a Stumpy's Bray? Sit down. Sit down, young friend, and I'll make your flesh to creep this day, and your hair to stand on end. Young man, it's hard to strive with son. But the hardest strife of war is when the green again comes on and drives God's grace away. Oh, it's quick to do, but it's long to do, and when the punishment comes at last, they give the whole world to undo the deed, the deed that's gone and passed. Over that stretch of Maryland and near the water bright, you'll see a tall fir tree stand. Beside dawn gave a white. Oh, I mean it will in my younger days when the story yet was rife, there lived within that lovely place, a farmer man and his wife. They sat together all alone that blessed autumn night when the trees were out and the hedge and stone were white in the soft moonlight. The girls and boys had all gone down away to the blacksmith's wake, when passed in by a wondrous smile and gave the door a shake. Well, the man got up and he went to the door, and when he'd spoken about it, a peddler man stepped onto the floor. And down tumbled the pack he bore, and a right heavy pack was that. God save us, ah, said the wife with a smile, but yours is a thriving thread. Aye, aye, I've I, I travelled money a mile, and plenty here, mate. Well, the man sat on by the dumb firelight after the peddler had gone to his rest. Close to his ear the devil came and entered into his breast. The man looked over his wife and she was as bad as he. Could we no murder on man the night? Uh, could we no, quoth she. Well, the man got up without a word and he took the pickaxe from behind the door and as he passed it under the sleeper, he stirred. But he never awakened more. He's dead, said the old man, coming back. What are the corpse, my dear? I will bury him snug on his in but pack. Never you mind the loss of the sack. I've taken it out of the gear. Aye, but the uh, pack will be a short. I, 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 by two get span. What will we do, says he? Ah, you're a doodering stupid fat cow man. We'll soon cut him off at the knee. Well, they shortened the corpse and they packed him tight with his legs in a pickle of hay. 
and o'er the burn and the sweet moonlight they gaze into the spray. They shoveled a hole right speedily and they laid a man on his back. But a right pair to ye, quoth the peddler, he sat in bolt up right on his pack. You thought you'd let me snuggle here where none would know my station. But I'll haunt you far, I'll haunt you near, father and son with terror and fear to the 19th generation. Well, the pair was sitting the very next night when the wee bit dog began to cower and they knew by the blue in the firelight that the evil one was in power. It had just struck nine, aye, nine of the clock, there when the man lay dead when they came to the other door to knock and a heavy, heavy tread. Now, it was not like a natural sound, but it was like someone stomping over the ground on the bones of his raw bare knees. The old man's head swam round and round the woman she did freeze when he in through the door like a trough of air and stump, stump, stump around the twa with his bloody head and his knee bones bare. She had missed mist to die awa. The woman's black locks here morn turned white. Aye, white as the mountain snows. The man was as thin as a staff that night, but he was stooped ere the morn arose. Still day by day the clock struck nine in the house for the dead the sun the wee bit dog began to whine and the ghost came chattering in. He reckoned it was a fearful flood. Three days and next the skies had poured and white with foam and black with warm the born and fury rolled. Could she get man Stump and all be here the next. For the burns fall to the brum, and the sour the lamb, and the up to the meadow ridge. But Stump and he came hurtling on and hit the room on the top of the chum, so he'd come round by the bridge. And it was stump, stump, stump to his place again, our stools and our chairs. He surely thought ten men and women were dancing there, and pairs. Well, they sold the gear. And across the sea to a foreign land they went. But who can flee from their appointed punishment? The ship swam over the waters clear with help of an eastern breeze, but the very first sound in the hard smooth deck that came in their ears was the tapping of them bare knees. Then out on the wilds of America their weary feet to set. But Stumpy was there first to say. And I haunted them there to their day and day, and I followed their children yet. Now, that's the story of Stumpy's Bray, and the murderer's fearful fit. Young man, your face is turned that way. You'll be gone this next past that yet. The tall fir trees, the hoose where well, won't to dwell. And if you see in there's the daylight fleas, stumping a bit on the bones of his knees, well that'll just be Stumpy himself. Now that's the story of Stumpy's bed.